I'm trying to think of the most polite way to say this, but um, Vlad's Mansion from the Vampire Pack, it's a really, really interesting build. I would argue that this build was like the beginning of The Sims 4's flop era. There was a period of time where all of the builds that they made for packs were really not good. I realize that calling it a flop era is really not nice. It just makes me so upset when I think back on these builds and how you paid money for them. When the worlds they were making were so cool, how were the builds in them so bad? I'm sorry, I know I said I was gonna try and be polite. It's just that this build, it, um, it fast fascinates me. So this is the main lot, like the big main mansion in the vampire pack. It's where Vlad lives. Obviously Vlad is very well known. I'd argue he's one of my top five favorite sims of all time. And so it just kind of makes me sad that his house is kind of weird. And I'll admit that my issues with this are a little bit picky. Like I'm being kind of dramatic here. I'm sort of known for that. I think that partially it's just a little bit too big for what it is. And when they make it too big, they can't really execute it as well. So like this tower part is just kind of too wide. So the window placement looks a bit strange. I think that this roof thing in the back is really weird. I understand what they're going for with this. Like it's kind of interesting because he's a vampire. Obviously he can't go outside. I think it's cool that he's got a big balcony space. It's just kind of a random roof shape that doesn't make much sense. In general, the house shape doesn't make much sense. Like this whole back is kind of weird. There's no windows, which is fine because he's a vampire, but I just wish that there was like some more interest on the back of the building instead of just a big blank wall. And I think they try tried to do that by making it have some diagonals, but that means it's just kind of weird. On the inside, honestly, it's got some potential. I think it's interesting how like gaudy it is almost. We've got this horrible carpet. We've got gargoyles everywhere. I really like this cool two-story living room they've got going on, but I feel like the placement of these pictures, it's supposed to be an interesting gallery wall, right? But it just looks kind of random. Normally I complain about this, but I do like how it's kind of dark. A lot of the EA builds oftentimes don't have enough lights, but in this case, because it's a vampire house, it kind of makes sense. The kitchen is kind of cool because it's covered in like cracks and cobwebs because he's a vampire, so obviously he's not using the kitchen. It's just like too big. <laughs> it's too big, it's a weird shape. The cabinets are so high up, you can't even reach them. It's got this really cool basement, which I actually genuinely love. It's got a bunch of coffins in it, and this is kind of like Vlad's actual bedroom. And this is my favorite part of the build by far. I honestly don't even want to change this too much. So in general, I feel like this build has a really cool concept. Like you can tell what they're going for. I just don't think it was executed that well. And I'm really not trying to be mean. I'm I'm being so polite when I say that. I, I mean it, I say it with love. I just kind of have a desire to renovate this house and maybe see if we can fix it to be more like what I was picturing in my head. So I think the goal today is to give Vlad the dream house that he deserves, but also do it using only the vampires pack because that way if you wanted to download this and replace the original, you could. So with that being said, let's just jump straight into it. And you're gonna see the first thing I did was go through and delete almost everything. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but like the first thing I did was go through and shrink a lot of this house, delete the roof, and kind of adjust the shape a little bit to give me more of a clean slate to start with. I was kind of joking on my stream when I built this that I may as well have just bulldozed it because I changed so much. But at its core, it's still a very similar shape. It's just significantly smaller and a little bit cleaner. Like the place as a whole has less diagonals and less random things everywhere. It's just a little bit more neatly done, which I think is an improvement. So in the end, even though I did make it smaller, it's still a similar size as before in terms of like how many bedrooms and bathrooms it has. I mostly made it smaller by like shrinking parts, you know, like making the room one or two tiles smaller instead of like deleting whole spaces. And I actually added kind of like an addition on to one side as well. It was kind of funny doing this because obviously I knew that I was building it for a vampire. So there's kind of some lore involved there. Like like, oh, vampires can't see themselves in mirrors. Do we need to have any mirrors? And obviously Vlad being a vampire doesn't need to use the toilet. They have no bladder need. So like, do I need to have toilets in this build? And I decided to try and make it a somewhat normal house in the sense that it's still got bathrooms. It's still got bedrooms, even though he lives in the basement in a coffin. Cause I was kind of picturing that this would like maybe have belonged to him before he died and became a vampire. Or maybe it's just an old house that already had these things in general. And I don't know. If I were him, I'd be like kind of trying to keep up appearances. I don't want people to know that I'm a vampire, so I can't have some weird vampire house. You need to have normal things like a kitchen and a bedroom and a bathroom, even if you won't use them. You still need to have them because what if you 
you've got guests, what if the neighbors come by, you know, you want it to look like a regular house still. Think of the resale value. We can't just destroy the kitchen. And that way also, if you were to play in this house or like visit Vlad in this house, you've still got the stuff that you need for your sim to use. I did do something kind of similar to before with the kitchen where I made it like covered in spider webs and cracks in the walls, but it's still functional. Like you can still use it to cook. There's just some cute little spider decor everywhere. And I kind of rearranged the whole downstairs floor plan, which I'll explain more once we actually get inside because right now I am still just going through and deleting everything. <laughs> so at this current point, the build almost looks worse than it did originally, but I swear it will get there. It will start to make more sense. I actually added a lot more space onto the third floor than you might realize because I kind of put a room inside of the roof. So there is a lot of extra space up there that we didn't have in the original. And we also have that addition downstairs. So I kind of made up for the deleting that I did. I always say this, but I really do think that sometimes less is more in The Sims. It, sometimes making things smaller is, is just the best course of action because it's just really hard to decorate and to do floor plans for and furnish these big giant homes with like big vast empty rooms. There's just not enough stuff that fits the scale appropriately. It's almost part of why I don't like to use the tall wall height. I'll use medium wall height for places like this, but I really never ever ever use the tall walls because they're just so big and nothing fits the scale appropriately. Like the doors that we have are too small. A lot of the windows that we have are too small. There's not enough wall decor and things to fill those big vast spaces. So it works for certain styles, but like for the most part, I just don't really ever use the tall things. And that's why I kind of shrunk this a little bit too, because it was just too vast. It was too big. It needed a little bit less for it to look better. I think that was like one of the number one problems that I had when I was first building in The Sims. Like back in The Sims 3, I would make these houses that were just huge. And then I wouldn't know how to do floor plans. I wouldn't know how to furnish them. And you didn't really need that much space either. Like I would just fill the entire lot with a box and like, there's no reason for that. <laughs> you can have the lot be half house and half backyard if you want, you know? So if you're ever struggling with floor plans, honestly, it sounds weird, but try to like shrink it a little bit and see if you have an easier time doing the floor plan. You don't need to shrink it a lot, maybe like a few tiles in. A lot of times I try to fit the rooms to about the size of the rugs that we have in the game. Cause a lot of the rugs that we have are pretty decent as far as like fitting couches or fitting a dining table on it. And so if you fit the rooms kind of around the size of the rug, sometimes it makes it a bit easier to furnish them. Obviously there is plenty of room to have big houses, but just kind of a tip if you're struggling. Cause I know a lot of people do shrink it, try shrinking it, see what happens. And then it like looks better on the inside too. Cause it's more full. I don't know. I always feel like my houses look better when I kind of scale them down a little. <laughs> it doesn't have to be extreme. It can be like this where it's only slight. Anyway, I'm working on some exterior details now. We had a lot of discussion about gargoyles when I was building this because I did do this live on my Twitch stream this week. I really wanted to use the gargoyles, but I didn't know where to put them or like how gargoyles fit into a build like this. I'm not really a gargoyle expert, which obviously is probably not shocking to you. Um, this is not really my uh, area of expertise. <laughs> so I didn't know where to put them. I ended up trying to use some that had like bat wings up on the top, on the very top of the roof. It actually looks a little bit weird, I think, but almost in a good way. Cause it is a vampire house and it does belong to Vlad. So if anybody's gonna have gargoyles, it would be him. Of course, it wouldn't be a Sims build without any issues. So let me just catch you up to speed on the couple glitches that I encountered while building this. Number one, and I'm very pleased to report, I did not have any terrain paint issues today. I have this very common terrain paint glitch where the game just deletes eats all my terrain paint. I didn't have that happen here. I have been like this close to crying over terrain paint multiple times in The Sims 4 recently. And so the fact that it didn't happen in this build was a huge relief. Of course, this was also a build where I barely did any terrain paint at all anyway, but it's still nice to note. What I did struggle with a lot were the friezes. Now the friezes are those like weird thick pieces of trim that I've put around the top of the exterior. There's a couple different kinds of trim in The Sims. There's like the friezes and then also the floor details. When you're in game, there's like two categories of trim. Basically the friezes go on top and the other one that's just called exterior trim goes on the bottom, which can get kind of confusing when you're thinking about multiple floors, but that's kind of the main difference. The friezes in The Sims are also a lot wider. They kind of only work on medium and tall wall height. It's kind of just like a big decorative band and it's really nice for things like this because it's kind of a fancy building. So you want to have like some fancy decor. They are unfortunately really glitchy though and kind of annoying to work with because they're like try and place in the wrong spot. They delete themselves. When you're doing things like this, where you're messing with a lot of different 
different kinds of rooms and I have like a big open second floor area. It makes the freezes really frustrating. <laughs> so it's just kind of a process trying to get them to place in the right areas. It's doable. They're just really, really annoying to work with. If you ever want me to try and make a tutorial on them, let me know because I can try to do some tips for you all and like compile a video that might be a little bit more helpful. They're just kind of tricky. So it helps to know some little tips to be able to make them work a little bit better. And then the other tricky thing is the stupid basement. So this house obviously had a basement always and I wanted to keep the basement and the basement stairs in pretty much the same location. The problem was just that the house and the basement were kind of having some visual glitches. By default, when you come and visit this lot, you can actually see like a weird square outline of the staircase in the front yard. And that's because the staircase is technically wider than the shape of the house is. It fits in the basement, but it doesn't fit in the first floor. And there's a few glitches that happen like this with basements. Basically, you have to have the basement lower than the ground floor. Otherwise, you have like the terrain lifting up and other things like that happening. But you also sometimes get these random visual glitches, like the stair one we were having here, where you could just see like an outline of the stairs. Not like a terrain glitch, but there was like a weird gray box <laughs> where there was an outline of the stairs. And so I messed around a lot with it, trying to get the stairs placed in an area that it wasn't visible from the front yard. So you might have seen me a few minutes ago, just like going back and forth, up and down between floors, trying to fix the staircase. It was really annoying. But those were pretty much the only major problems that I had in this build. We didn't really encounter any other two annoying glitches or anything. And now at this point, more of the house layout is kind of together. So let me kind of walk you through what I've done. First of all, I kept the two story room thing that they had going on before, but I flipped it around so it's in the front instead of the back because I liked the idea of a more grand front entryway. And then the staircase is right there in the front so you can walk up to the upstairs and there's kind of like a beautiful walkway and some fancy doors into the bedrooms. So in general, the front is looking a lot more grand now, at least in my opinion. And I used this red paneling on the walls that I have never used before. I honestly don't even think I knew that we had that swatch, but I feel like it looks really good in this room. Vlad's house is very red and black everywhere in here, which I feel like kind of makes sense for the vampire. I had a lot of fun decorating this with all the like grand and silly things I got to add in. Like I put knight statues around the place. There's gargoyles. I have these big, massive, scary portraits of Vlad everywhere. All these things that I never get to use normally, I was putting all over the place inside. And then to the right side of that entryway, we've got a dining room and then access to the kitchen. The kitchen is kind of big and also kind of empty, but not in a bad way. I just tried to make it look like nobody uses that kitchen. So it's got like some crates and some spider webs. And then on the left side of the house, we have like a big formal living room and also what I'm calling the music room where the piano ends up going. And then upstairs, we've just got two bedrooms and two bathrooms. This house was also the perfect opportunity for a bookcase door. So I hid that staircase that goes down into the basement behind some secret bookcase doors. And it's a room full of coffins. So if any room is going to be hidden, it should be that one. <laughs> and so I, I tried to hide it down there and make it kind of sneaky. And then I sort of pictured that upstairs, the two bedrooms are mostly just guest rooms. Like I'm kind of figuring that Vlad never goes up there. He doesn't sleep up there. He doesn't want to sleep up there. It's more like if he has people over, may maybe they're just there for show. I don't know. I guess most of the people he has over are probably also vampires, which is why he also has extra coffins in his basement. <laughs> Cause he's got three and there's just him living here. But you never know, you need room to grow, right? What if he meets a new vampire friend? What if you wanna move in with your Sims? We've gotta make sure we've got space. So while I'm working on this, full transparency, this is not my first time I've done this build. I've renovated this build probably a few times. I think I did it around this time last year for Halloween. And I know I also did it a few years ago when I was doing the Black Widow challenge because when I played that challenge I was like marrying all these men and then moving into their houses renovating them and then killing them and stealing all their money And Vlad was one of those men that I killed for his money So I've definitely renovated this before but I kind of wanted to do it again one to celebrate Halloween But also because I wanted to do it with just the vampires pack because oftentimes I do these things with like a million packs and that's fun to do But it's almost like a different sort of challenge and a different sort of build to do it with limited packs. A, because it's more useful for you all, because if you actually have the vampires pack, then you can use this no matter what. And also it gives us a clearer picture of like what could have been had the build maybe been executed better when it was first made for real. I don't really understand the situation with the EA builds, if I'm being completely honest with you, because they talk about like, oh, they have limitations for object counts and stuff, but then like the simmers, 
do builds like they started hiring creators to work on them and those are fine and like I've done it I've been involved in that and I I feel like we can do a lot more than they lead you to believe obviously I wasn't allowed to use any move objects when I did the builds for EA so I guess I probably shouldn't have done that here if I wanted it to be true to to the story but it still doesn't really explain why like Strangerville's houses are completely empty literally completely empty there's like full-on empty rooms in Strangerville houses and they say that it like adds to the strange but even that makes no sense to me I don't get it I really never will get it. This build isn't that bad. This one like has furniture and stuff. I just think it's weird. <laughs> this one is, it's not as objectively bad as some of the others are. This is more of a personal preference issue with Vlad's house, but I said I was going to be nice, so I'll stop talking about it. I love the vampires pack. It's so good. <laughs> All of the occult packs they've made, like the Realm of Magic pack, it's got so many good builds in it too, doesn't it? Yeah, there's no weird things in those builds at all. There's not like staircases to nowhere or anything. Anyway, um, <laughs> I like to use these, these speed builds kind of like podcasty almost to give you some life updates. And I actually just got back from TwitchCon, so I have a lot of life updates for you. I have many stories to share from the convention. So first of all, it was in Vegas, which was interesting to say the least. Vegas, in my opinion, was a really terrible place to hold a convention, specifically right now, because they're hosting this big F1 race, like a car race in the city soon. And so they're under massive amounts of construction to prepare for this race. Like they're redoing roads, they're like building stands, like they're, they're doing a lot of construction over the past like 10 months or something. And the race is next month, so it's coming up really soon, so it's even worse than it was before. So you basically cannot get around Vegas by car. Like it's, the strip is too busy. There's too many cars, too much traffic. It takes forever to get anywhere. But it's also not that walkable because of the construction either. And it's really far away. Like it's, it's one road, the strip is one road, but it's a very long road and the hotels are so far apart. It looks closer than it is, but they're all so big that it might be like a 20 minute walk between one hotel and the next one. And like parts of the area near the convention center literally didn't have sidewalks poured. Like they had a space for a sidewalk and like the supports in for it, but they hadn't poured the concrete yet. So there was no sidewalk. So it's just really not that walkable. They do have a train, like a monorail train, but even that was so busy with like the two convention events going on at the same time in Vegas. So it just seemed like a really not ideal place to host the convention. And I don't think they're gonna do it again there next year. So it was kind of interesting being there during all of this, I guess. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. It was weird. The convention itself was fun. I had a really good time. I did a panel on charity streaming. I had a meet and greet, so that was really fun. I got to meet a lot of my friends that I've known for many years, but haven't seen in person yet because of COVID and stuff. Speaking of COVID, a lot of people got sick at the convention, which is really scary. I've been okay. I've been testing for COVID literally every day, like while I was there and since I got home. I'm good so far. Perhaps the biggest, most exciting update from TwitchCon is that I got to meet Julian Solomita in person. And I, like many of you, have been a massive fan of his for like literally forever. And you are actually not gonna believe this, but I, um, I was in a car with him at the same time at the convention. They had like these shuttles to take creators from the hotel to like the back entrance of the convention center. It like went around to the loading dock or something. So they took you in a car from the hotel to the back. And Julian and I both got to the car at the exact same time. And it was like a big SUV. So there was space for all of us. So they're like, okay, just get in the car. So I was in the car with him and I didn't think he knew who I was, obviously. Like, <laughs> why would I assume that? And I didn't want to like bother him because he seemed busy. So I, I kind of just sat in the back and minded my own business. And then we got out of the car and he was like, oh my God, Kayla hey. And he was like, do you want to get a picture together? And then he posted the picture on his Instagram story. This is just such a like mind boggling. <laughs> like I just can't believe I, I really didn't think he, he knew who I was at all. He's been playing a lot of Sims recently on his streams and like I've rated him before and stuff and we know a lot of the same people. So I guess it isn't that surprising, but like that was kind of cool for me because I really like look up to and respect him so much. So that was like really exciting as maybe you couldn't imagine. It's like kind of embarrassing to talk about. So I'm sorry, I'll stop. But <laughs> anyway, really enjoyed that. That was really cool. They also gave us Crocs because Crocs was like a main sponsor of TwitchCon. So they gave everybody a pair of free Crocs. They were just plain Crocs. Like I just got a pair of black Crocs, but I now have two pairs of Crocs and I like them. I like my Crocs. I don't really need a second pair of Crocs. So I might give the new ones to my sister, but that was kind of interesting that Crocs was sponsoring them. If Crocs wants to sponsor me, I'll do it. 
I'm a fan actually. I don't really wear my Crocs out in public, but they're really good like, oh my God, I gotta run into the garage for a second or like, oh, I gotta go into the backyard real quick and like water a plant or something. I use my Crocs for that. They're like nice, easy slip on shoes. So anyway, shout out to Crocs. Um, thank you for sponsoring TwitchCon. If you wanna pay me, I'll accept. There was a lot of Simmers at TwitchCon this year also, which is kind of fun. In general, the Sims community on Twitch specifically has grown a lot in recent years. Like compared to when I first went to TwitchCon, like in 2018, there's like literally hundreds more sim streamers now. There was like a handful of us back then and now there's loads of us and we all hung out the whole time. It was really fun. One of my friends got married at TwitchCon. Their username on Twitch is EmrisK. I'll actually, I'll link it down below. Why not? But they and their long-term partner were in town for, for the convention, obviously. All of their friends were in town and so they were like, you know what? Let's just get married. And they actually did it. So I went to a wedding at TwitchCon. Like it was just, it was kind of cool. It was a really cool experience and that is my life update from last weekend. I also posted some pictures on Instagram. If you want to go check out. My name is just Lil Simsy on Instagram. I realized as soon as I got home that I did not get a single picture with Steph or Sasha while we were there. And I don't know how I always do this. Vixella and Steph o Sims are two of my best friends in the entire world. We have been like best friends for years at this point, since like 2016, 2015. And we never take pictures together. I always go home and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I didn't get a single like nice photo. We have all kinds of random ugly photos and like joke photos, but no, just like regular nice photos. Does anybody else do that? Do you like just forget to get pictures with people? I need to make more of a conscious effort to ask at things like this because I always just forget. I need to remind myself to take more. But anyway, sorry, back to the build for a second. We're actually kind of getting close to finishing it now. I'm doing the bedrooms upstairs at this moment. We did one kind of fancy red and black bedroom that I pictured as like the primary bedroom because it's got like a separate office attached and the bathroom. And then there's also a purple guest room. I kind of kept a similar color scheme because the original house had a purple guest room also. I personally think that mine is a little bit better though, <laughs> but maybe I'm a bit biased. And now we're moving down into the basement where I actually really did not do too much. The main thing that I changed was adding in some platforms. I like raised up the coffins a little bit and made like some kind of cool fancy staircases to them with platforms because I realized you can't use staircases on diagonals and this obviously is completely on a diagonal. So I had to do some custom stairs with the platforms. And then I also changed the lighting color a little bit and stuff because I wanted to try and make this room seem a bit nicer. It's hard to explain because I never noticed this before, but it has green lights. It kind of looks like a swamp, which I don't, I don't really get. I mean, I love it. I love a sewer. You know, I found cats in a sewer and now I've got more kittens in my house, but like, I, I just didn't like it. So I made the lights red instead. And then outside I put a fair amount of landscaping. One of the main changes in the front and like exterior that I did was delete the fence because it used to have a fence. But when you look at this lot as a whole, there's like a big fence and graveyard around it. So I didn't really want to put a fence within the fence. So I'm kind of trying to pretend that the whole lot is Vlad's property. Even if I don't actually have access to edit the rest of it, I'm like imagining that he lives in the graveyard and those graves are on his lot and the fence in the back defines his lot. It makes the house look a bit more grand when it's bigger like that. And I think that's kind of what their intention was when they built this lot that way. And also the house basically fills up the entire lot. So there's not really a lot of room for stuff like that anyway. And then outside, I just used a lot of like dead rose bushes and debug vampire landscaping. It's not too fancy. There isn't too much nice stuff going on. It's all kind of dead, obviously. And then I decided against putting any vines on the exterior of the house. I just, I, every time I do this, I try to use the vampire's like vine flower things. And I just don't like them. I really don't like how they look. I've never managed to make them look not bad. I feel like every time I try and do it, it just looks weird. Maybe it's because the brick is so busy or something on this. I don't know, but I just, I couldn't get it to not look silly. So I ended up not using them. Vines are not my area of expertise, okay? I try and it doesn't work. <laughs> but otherwise the house is pretty much done. I'm just putting in some last minute finishing touches, adding in some details and then deleting some vine details that I didn't like and checking the lighting and everything. And then that, my friends, is the finished renovation of Vlad's ugly mansion. So I think what I'm gonna do now is pop back into the game so I can show you a proper tour of the finished product. Now, just in case you had forgotten, this is what the original build looked like. It's kind of a jump scare, at least for me. I think it's like the roof 
in the back. The roofing is really wild to me. It had potential. It just, it wasn't my favorite thing. So I decided to renovate it. Here's what the inside looked like. One of the things that I didn't include was the top floor. I kind of wanted to leave some room and I didn't really have space for a staircase. So I didn't really use the upstairs, but downstairs I completely revamped the whole floor plan. So this is the original version. And then the upstairs looked kind of like this. It's a really strange shape. And this is the finished product. It costs almost 250,000 simoleons, but it does only use one pack, which is good. Cause sometimes I'll make some builds that use like 20 packs and that's bad. So when we place it, if it'll load, the finished build looks like this, very similar, just a little bit more compact. <laughs> and hopefully I think looks a little bit better. So we've got a really grand entrance with some gargoyles up to this really fancy front door. I did hide the mailbox behind this gargoyle. I didn't know where to put it. I feel like if I was using packs, I would use one of the wall mailboxes, but I wasn't. So I just tried to hide one. It'll still work. And hopefully it's not so obvious that it's there. Around the side, we've got this kind of cute little back door. I did put a telescope here. And then around the very back, we've got like a double balcony. I liked the idea of Vlad having some covered spaces for him to sit outside at, cause they kind of had that in the original. So I tried to replicate that. And I think that this version of it looks a bit better. Also this stuff in the terrain, these stones is actually attached to the lot. Like you can't get rid of that when you delete the terrain paint, nothing happens. It's not actually terrain paint, so you can't erase it, but it fits perfectly with the staircase. Like this location works so well. And then when you come inside the house, this obviously is that very grand front entrance. So we've got like an organ. This is that kind of secret bookcase door I was talking about. So we'll get to that. And this room is actually two stories tall. So it's very huge and very grand in here. On the right side, you walk into the formal dining room. It's got like a fireplace, a big long table. I put some china cabinets. And then in the back, this is the kitchen. So I kind of put some cobwebs and stuff in here. I also have like a small breakfast table. This has potential to be a very fancy kitchen. It's just not currently being used. Also this thing I always forget exists. This is base game. It's just a little globe. It's an unlockable from the journalist career, but it looks kind of cool there. I was pretending that it was that globe bar from the luxury party stuff pack, even though it's just a globe, no bar. And then on the left side of this entryway, you walk back into the formal living room. So I also put some more night statues in here. There's just some seating and a fireplace. I put some kind of funky cabinets like this thing's got a skull in it. And then I tried to make the room less square and I kind of wanted to expand this bathroom. So we've got a little tiny bathroom right here. And then to mimic it, I've got a closet on this side. I used the same coats in there twice because I figured Vlad only ever wears like one outfit. So he just has like multiples in there in his coat closet. And then on the far side, this is that music room. It's also a bar. So we have like a bar, a big portrait of Vlad and a piano in here. I covered all of the windows with curtains because he is a vampire. So I just tried to block all the light. And then when you come back, Back to the entryway, we have this very suspicious bookcase. This is actually the entrance into the basement. Now, a couple weird things about this. The door is actually clipping. I couldn't get it to not clip because I'd have to like scoot it over and I wanted it to be centered on the wall. So I figured it was okay if part of this door clipped. I just kind of like hit it in a room and then put some spider webs there. And your Sims will use this door to access the basement. We've got some fancy pictures and some more spiders. And then when you come downstairs, it's a very similar shape to the original. It's just got red lights instead of green. The deck decorations are a bit more organized. And I also put the platforms in, but overall I really liked this weird shape. I thought it was cool, the shape that it had. So I tried to keep most of it. I did bigger changes everywhere else, but not so much in there. And then when you come upstairs, we've got this really cool like balcony overlook where you walk in the hallway. And on the right side, we've got a very small bathroom. We also have the purple guest bedroom over here. It's got kind of a fancy layout to it. These are both very big rooms. So I kind of tried to divide them a bit by putting like a wall here and some columns. And then on the other side of the hallway, this is like Vlad's more fancy formal room. He's got his own private balcony up here. He's also got like a little private office space in the back corner. I even used this room divider cause I never put this thing anywhere. So I thought, you know what, let's just try it. <laughs> and then he's got an ensuite bathroom too, which he doesn't really need the toilet from. He doesn't need to shower still, but he's got kind of a fancy bathroom space with a weird bat wallpaper. And that's the whole house. Again, I didn't put anything up here in the top floor cause I couldn't 
didn't really fit a staircase anywhere that didn't ruin the vibes. If you wanted to renovate it, you could totally add some stuff up there. But I think for me, that is the finished, oh wait. Oh, I put a dead cow plant in the roof. Yeah, I forgot about that. There is a dead cow plant in there, okay. Last thing, dead cow plant. <laughs> and that is the finished build. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Happy Halloween. There's nothing scarier than an EA build. So what better way to celebrate? If you liked this, I do a lot of building stuff here on my YouTube channel, but also on my Twitch channel because I live streamed this first. So if you want to come by and check it out, my name is just Lil Simsy on Twitch and I am going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. Oh my goodness, is anybody else really, really obsessed with City Skylines right now? This is probably one of my favorite games of literally all time and the new one just came out and I am deep in my obsession of it right now. It's all I think about.